In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a WordPress multi-site, the same one that WordPress.com uses to host 37 million plus websites. And if your hosting count allows it size-wise, you could have just as many websites in your network, and we're going to get started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, and you want to get better at WordPress so that you can earn more from your services, from your client work, from your business, and you want to earn more using WordPress, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure that you hit the bell icon so you're notified every time I publish more awesome stuff about WordPress to help you earn more and get better at what you do. And with that out of the way, let's head over to the screen capture so we can build that WordPress multi-site right now. So we're right here in Bluehost and first thing we want to do is go to the file manager. I'm going to assume you already have a domain in your Bluehost account or at least an add-on domain. If you don't yet, I've linked to a video in the description that will show you how to add an add-on domain into your Bluehost account. And what we wanna do is open the folder for that domain. And this is it right here for me. And I'm gonna download a fresh copy of WordPress, the self-hosted version. Just go to wordpress.org, click on download two times, that one and then this one. Now it's on our hard drive. I'm going to go back to here, click on Upload. Click on Choose File and find that WordPress zip we just downloaded, which is right here. Upload that guy. And in a few seconds, even on slow internet connections, a few seconds, so at most a couple minutes, it'll be all uploaded. Mine's already done. You can close this tab once you're done there. And then we refresh this folder, and we have the zip file right here. I'm going to extract it by clicking on it, pressing extract, and then it shows if the files that were extracted. Then we click on close, refresh again. Now we have a WordPress folder. I'm going to click into there, select everything in here, and then move it one folder back. So out of that WordPress folder and into the root folder of the website. If you don't do that, your WordPress site will actually be at your domain name forward slash WordPress is where the home page will be. We don't want that, we want it right at the domain name. So that's why we move the files out of that WordPress folder. We can select that WordPress folder, we can select the WordPress zip and delete both of those. And then we can open up the WP config file because we have to add some database credentials to that, right in this area here. I'm gonna quickly make a database in our cPanel account going to look for MySQL databases, which is right here in my case. I'm just going to make a quick database here. And I'm going to copy this database name right into the config file, which I have over here. I'm going to paste it right there. And I'm going to make the user for that database. And generate a password. I like the really complicated looking ones. That one's not too complicated, but I like it. I'm gonna use that password to cl click on create user. And we have those two things set. It's gonna paste the password into this location here. Go back, get this username. And paste it into the username area. Okay, so that didn't work. Took the password again. Copy this again. And paste the username there. There we go, there's the username. So now we have our database credentials in here. One last thing we have to do is link the user to the database, otherwise you're gonna get an error establishing database connection error. Uh, so we link those two right here. I always name my database with the first two or three characters at the front, so I always can match the database with the user, because I have a lot of databases and users, as you just saw. If I don't do it that way, if I don't have the same characters at the front, it's hard to find the, uh, the right user and right, right database. So we've successfully given all privileges to that user, and now we can actually start our WordPress and, and install the WordPress site, but there's one thing we wanna do first. 
because we want to install a multi-site WordPress, we want to add something else to the config file. So we're going to scroll right down to where it says, that's all, stop editing happy blogging. Right before there, just going to copy and paste this piece of code, which is also in the description, so you can just copy from there. And what this is saying is, the function wp allow multi-site is set to true. So now when we save this, we are going to go to the website. In my case, it's one called origamifold.com. And now we go through the regular WordPress install. So I'm getting this error, not really an error, but it's saying that I set this database information, which we already did. And the problem is I saved this file, but what I didn't do was update the file name to take out the sample from the file name. So we want to delete that dash and the word sample. So there we have our config file. I'm just going to refresh this page. And it should just bypass it. it says it already exists. Okay, that's great. Now we're going to click on installing now. Restart that again. And this time it worked. Just going to call this site origami folds. Have a nice complicated password. My email. BjornWPLearningLab.com. You got to discourage search engines from indexing or not. It's up to you. Then we click on install WordPress. And we're automatically logged in. Sometimes you have to log in first. Other times you're automatically logged in. And now this is where we diverge from a regular WordPress install. So we added that little piece of code in the WP config file. And what we have here is pretty much a regular WordPress site. But what's been added is under the tools menu, we have a network setup link. So we're going to click on that. So in the network setup, the first thing you have to do is pick whether you want subdomains or subdirectories. Now the difference is highlighted in the examples they give. The subdomain has a unique set of characters before the domain name. So in place of the www, it will have the subdomain. And the subdirectory will have the location of the site determined by what comes directly after the forward slash after the domain name. So in this example, they're both called site one and site two, but we see subdomain, site one's before the domain name, and for the subdirectory, it's after the domain name. I usually use subdomains for this kind of thing. And there's also a really cool plugin that allows you to do domain mapping once you have your network installed. And so what that means no matter which one of these you choose, you can actually have a domain name assigned to that URL. So for example, you, would, you could have origamifold.com as the homepage. And then site1.origamifold.com could be of myjetskiingsite.com. And that actually takes them to this subdomain. The user never sees that. The, that's never shown in the address bar, but your custom domain will be mapped to that subdomain. So that means you can have a WordPress multi-site install and you can have literally thousands or millions of websites on unique domain names and nobody ever knows they're linked. And I don't know if you knew this or not, but WordPress.com actually runs one multi-site install and they have something like 37 or 40 million websites running off that one install, which is wild. So this, is stuff, this thing is very scalable, very solid and choose the one that's appropriate to you. And if you wanna do domain mapping, I'll have another tutorial for that to show you how that works. It's really simple, uh, but first we have to install the multi-site. So choose the one that applies to you and give a name to the network that you're working on. So this would be when they go to the homepage, like origamifold.com. You can have basically a, a homepage for the entire site network if you want or, or not, depends on what you want. But I just, keep it like this. You can change that later as well. Then I click on install. So now that the installation is complete, we're given some homework to do. And really simply, we need to copy this information into the wp-config file. We need to copy this information into the htaccess file. And it's recommended you back them both up before you do that. And we're going to do both of those things right now. So we're going to copy this, Copy this whole piece and it says, put it above the line reading, that's all, stop editing, happy blogging. So we go back to here, we open the wp-config file. First, I'm gonna copy it. So I'm gonna right click on wp-config, click on copy, and I'm just gonna give it a new name, wp-config, 
uh, backup.php. Click on copy file. And now we have our backup right here. And the HT access file is possibly here. I don't know that for sure. But if I go ahead and create new file, click and type in .ht access. Click on create new file. Uh, it says could not create it because we currently have one. But we can't see it because all files will start with a dot at the beginning are hidden files. And there's a special thing you have to do to actually see them. So we're going to close the file manager here. Go back to Bluehost and look for the file manager icon. Click on it to open it. And I'm just going to check this box beside show hidden files. Click on submit. Then I'm going to find my site folder again. And it's right here. And now we see the HD access file. It was just hidden before, but now it's visible. And we're going to back this one up just like we backed up the, um, the WP config file. So HD access backup. Copy file. I've got backups of both the HD access file and the config file. So now we can safely put in this information that the site gave us. So we're going to copy this again, then open up wconfig file in the editor. Scroll down to where it says that's all. Happy blogging right here. And paste that piece of code in. Click on save. And then close that tab. Then we open the HD access file. Also in the code editor. Go back to our site, copy the stuff for the HD access file. And for the instructions here, it says add this to the HD access file, replace all other WordPress rules. So WordPress by default adds a bunch of rules, which are these rules here. So we're going to replace all of those with the ones that the website gave us. So here they are in here. I kept the, uh, the begin WordPress and WordPress because sometimes you have other stuff in HD access as well. And this will show you what's for WordPress and what's not. I click on save again there. And we go back to our site. And at the very bottom it says once you complete these steps, your network is enabled and configured, you will have to log in again. So if we click on login, and we just type in our login information. And now we're back into our website. And we have a multi site now. Something new that you'll see now that you've logged back in is the my sites link up here. And right here. And you will have a network admin the origami fold site, which is the main site. The network admin is kind of a super admin. So each of your sites can have their own admin, but then the super admin is the one that sees everything, that sees all the websites. And to add a new site is really, really easy. All you have to do is go to network admin, go to sites, click on add new, and we put in the URL, which is in this case is a subdomain. If you chose a subdirectory, this will look slightly different. The domain name will come first and it'll be forward slash with this field. But if we type in testing, site title, title testing site, email will be my email again. You'd want to put in the email of the actual admin for that site if that's you. That's great. Click on add site and now the site's created. That's literally how fast it is. And that is a brand new WordPress install within this network. And you can add as many as you want. As many as your host will allow you to have, as in as, as, as large as your database can get within your host, you can have that many sites, which is amazing. So if you go uh, back to my sites, it now has two listed here. And for each of these sites, you can go to the dashboard, add a new post. And once you go in the dashboard, it's like a full admin dashboard, like a regular WordPress site. You can add themes or install themes, install plugins. Or sorry, you can activate themes and activate plugins. You can't install them. Only the super admin can. So you as a super admin, if you go into the themes area, you can add however many themes you want. In this case, we have three. These are the themes that will be, as long as you have network enable right here, this one is network disabled. As long as it's network enabled, each of your sites will have access to that theme that's network enabled. And you can have as many as you want. Then they can pick the one that they want to use and just click on activate to use that theme. Same for the plugins. There's going to be network enabled options that when they are network enabled, all your sites on the network will have access to that plugin, but not the ones that are not enabled, and they can't install their own. So that's one of the big gotchas with multi-site install. The site owners can't install their own plugins and themes, 
and there's there's a place you gotta check out if you want to do multi-site installs and that is wpmudev.com they basically wrote the book on multi-site plugins and if you go to plugins it is actually amazing that if you read through these plugins they, they, they just are exciting to read they're awesome and I'm not affiliated with these guys I don't get any kind of commission or anything they don't even know who I am as far as I know but I've used these plugins before on multi-sites and they're fantastic and there's hundreds of them hundreds so pretty much whatever you want to do with a multi-site if you want to sell sites to other people who they pay you a monthly fee and they sign up and build their site on your network that's totally possible with these plugins uh, which is a great revenue model but there's all kinds of stuff I encourage you if you want a multi-site look at this site wpmudev.org and check out their plugins check out their services they're awesome and now that you have your multi-site installed i encourage you to just play around with it and kind of learn how it works it works pretty much just like a regular wordpress site just little little subtle differences in the super admin and that's all there is to setting up a wordpress multi-site network just like wordpress.com has they obviously have a couple more bells and whistles but the same base technology exists on theirs as is now on yours if you followed along if you have not yet subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when I publish more awesome stuff so you can get better at WordPress and start earning more for yourself and your business and your clients. And just get out there and keep crushing it. I'll see you in the next video.